Hey, Transit Unplugged listeners, before we get to this episode... Hey, everybody, this is Lauren Skyver, CEO of Sunline Transit Agency. I just want to remind you to make sure you get to the Trapeze Think Transit meeting on June 3rd through the 6th in Nashville. I'm going to be talking about early adoption and how you move your agency forward in these new innovative times. I'd like to talk about our successes, some of our challenges, and how you can prepare your agency for something new. Thanks, Lauren. And for more information about attending the Think Transit Conference and registering, go to our website at trapezegroup.com forward slash Think Transit. Looking forward to seeing you there in Nashville in June. Hi, I'm Paul Comfort, and welcome to a special edition of Transit Unplugged. Today is part two of our interview with the CEO and general manager of WMATA, Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, Mr. Paul Wiedefeld. On the first episode, which is still available and you can listen to uh, on our website, transitunplugged.com or wherever you get the uh, episodes from, iTunes, etc. Uh, and the first episode, Paul talked about his background, career, and also the current efforts that they've been undergoing to you know, bring WMATA back up to par when it comes to their state of good repair on the rail tracks and the subway system, etc., on this second episode, which you'll hear today, Paul talks about a little bit more about what they're planning to do with their bus system, a little bit about their financing structure, how they don't have a dedicated funding source, although they're the fourth largest transit system in America with 13,000 employees and a million passengers a day and what they're doing about that. Talks about other innovations they're bringing online as well as uh, what they're doing with the Purple Line and the Silver Line outside of uh, Washington, D.C. You'll hear about all that on this special edition, part two of our interview with Paul Wiedefeld. Sit back and enjoy. What does it mean to be a successful public transit agency? What are you doing to lead the way? It's time to learn from the top transit professionals in North America. This is Transit Unplugged with your host, Paul Comfort. I think people across America would be flummoxed to hear that you don't really have a dedicated funding source. Yes. Tell us about that and what's going on there with financing and how that relates into governance, how right. people are talking about maybe the governance needs to change some. Yeah, we have, we have no dedicated funding source. So basically we go to the jurisdictions every year on an annual basis and ask them for money. And, and it's interesting because you can imagine we have uh, Maryland sort of the dynamics of how their legislative process works and their funding process works in the district and Virginia. Right. And then uh, in Virginia and the district, we compete with other general fund uh, needs. So whether it's police, education, health, whatever. In Maryland, it's against other transportation. Right, with the trust fund. With the trust fund, so yeah. like the federal government does. So because of that, that makes it extremely difficult to do any long-term capital planning. And I also feel over the time, that's what's led us to part of the issue because the here and now is what would get the money, the operating side. Mm. It's very difficult. So as those costs keep going up, the money kept going towards the operating side of the house because you don't want to cut service. You know, uh, labor, dealing with labor, you know, negotiations is mm -hmm. tough for everybody. Um, so that's where the resources tend to go. And they were less and less on the on the capital side. Oh, and on the state of good repair. And that maybe right. helped lead that, to where you were at. That, all that drifted away. Yeah. And then on top of it is was the need for more service. So we from literally from ten years ago, we had a sixty more sixty percent more time to be out on the tracks and repair stuff than we did until we just started this PMI wow. program. And it was because people wanted, you know, so right. we were running service till three AM. Oh yeah. So literally we could do no maintenance on weekends. Because we open up at seven, so there was like you can't even set up and tear down. Right. So we're working five days a week, and we we closed at midnight, and we're open at, at five. So again, it's the same. It's like how, yes. how can you possibly do this? So that's what um, that's the, and that led to some of the financial issues. Right. So then, so basically, what we've said is we need a dedicated funding source. We need to cap the. We need everyone to continue to give what they've been giving, mm -hmm. and we're going to cap that at three percent growth rate. Um, but we need a dedicated source. And then I suggested that be put in a lockbox only for capital, can never be used for operating. Um, a lockbox. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's not <laughs> that's my famous idea. It's not in not, Washington. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's DC. Yeah. But yeah, it's not my term, but yeah. it does work. Be, um, because I think that, that was that is some of the concern. People Absolutely. say, yeah, but I'm right. just being sucked up you know, right. on this other day side. Day to day stuff. Yeah. yeah. Which then you don't solve the big problem. So are you making progress there, or is there still we a are, lot of. We yeah. have never. Um, it, it's been talked about for decade plus we yeah. had study upon study business groups everybody's talked about it 
but no one's ever really done anything. We have three pieces of legislation in in, in the three uh, legislative bodies right now. Okay, Maryland's put, putting forward a minimum of one hundred twenty five million dollars, which would come to us that we could sell debt. Uh, the uh, District of Columbia has put forth a 0.75 percent increase in their sales tax. That again would be transferred to us. Okay. And Virginia is actually had. There's going to be a bill introduced. Let's say March. Uh, we're, we're in early February. That there's a bill going to be introduced um, today um, that um, will basically get them to about the same range. So that's all moving very well. And the fact that we even have these three yeah. in that process is unbelievable. So three different kind of ways they're handling it, but all of it giving you yes. what you need. Yeah, from our point. perspective, we we've, we've stayed out of it because of the dynamics of you know the sources and all. Yeah, that. Yeah, you can't get that. into the political. Ours side is of it. the yeah. needs. Right. Here's our need. Here's what we need. We identified roughly. We've been spending about eight hundred million the last ten years, about eight hundred million dollars a year on capital okay. expenditures. What we need to ramp up to is about one and a half billion. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so we're about one point two now. Uh, when we started here two years ago. We were asking for about a billion, but we were only spending about seven hundred fifty million. We were okay. spending seventy seven five percent. Last two years, we spent in the ninety nine percent range, wow. and we yeah. ramped up to the one point two. So spend um, every dollar, right? Right. Yeah. And because you have to show yeah. people that you know that you're taking their dollars, that you're doing something with it. But a lot of that's because when we were safe track, we focused yeah. on the cars. Right. But We've done a asset needs assessment, you know the the federal requirement, right? And we show this mega, you know, need. What is it? What's 40, the dollar amount? Do you know? The total number is twenty five billion over the okay. next 20, 10 years. What I've recommended is that we just create a one point five billion dollar program, and the reason is two reasons. One is that physically, for us to even to, to deliver that larger program, two and a half billion dollars a year, is a yeah. hell of a lot. But more importantly, is it's a particularly on the rail side, it's a balance because. I just can't shut down all the lines and throw all this capital dollars into that. You have to manage that, yeah. and keep service going, you know. So it, there's a balance there. So that's to me is more realistic. And then just the, the politics of you know how much money could we get? Yes, right, <laughs> you know, right. I mean, if you're asking for two percent increase in sales tax, just you, right. you know why you bother? It's not going to happen. It's the federal. I'm, I just talked to Carolyn Flowers last week, and she was telling me about her right. involvement with you guys early on in the safety stuff. Uh, with the oversight office, uh, are, is the feds going to are they going to step up with any more money for you? Do you know or I, we? Uh, that's the other. That's the other. The fourth part component. Of this, that's right? the yeah. fourth component. Um, we're very fortunate. We get the formula dollars like everyone else, but we have this special funding source that uh, is wrapping up next year, where we get another additional 150 million dollars for the system, which then has to be matched locally at 150 million dollars, 50, 50, 50 between okay. the three jurisdictions. Yeah. Um, it's called Priya. But anyway, so that that what we what we say is that's got to continue in the future. And our rationale is that 40% of our peak travel are federal employees. Right. That's who we do. Right. And then we are we also are the visitors, you know, we are their system for the for the nation's capital. So we feel that's is unique here in, in the district, again in the nation's capital and, and the uh, both in government and, and tr- tourism. Um, and we feel they should step to the plate and help us with that. So um uh and there's two bills or three bills in Congress that actually do that. Okay, that's you know, good. They have different yeah. requirements associated with. They're so, moving as well. So you've had kind of the safety side of things, and then you've had the financial side. Now let's talk for just a couple minutes about innovations. Mm-hmm. What are some of the new innovations that you're trying to put forward for the folks in the Washington region, sure. maybe in the paratransit and also the fixed route side? Yeah, on the fixed route side, I mean, I mentioned the, the, the um, Russia Hour Promise. That really is, it's really using analytics. Mm. That's what we did is we have the capability, and we're unique in our system because you have to tap in and tap out of our system. So we looked, we had some you know, real smart people um, internally that started looking at data. And what we found was if there is a half hour, of, someone has an experience where they're delayed half hour, they don't come back to us, because we, again, we can monitor their usage. They don't come back to us uh, on a regular basis or even try us for about three months. Hmm. So we've lost all this revenue. So then we said, so we literally went out with some, some focus groups, and we said, well, what would that be? So half hour free, if you wait a half hour and you give us free money, we don't care. We're, that's not enough. But they did react positively. Well, if it's 15 minutes, I get it, but, you know, then it's free, then it means something to me. Okay. So that is, you know, so it's innovative because we're using data to, oh, yeah. to, to mine that, to say, all right, now what does that do? How can we, you know, how can we And you automatically that? put it on their account if you know it was running late. Yes. They okay. don't have that's to do cool. a thing. So that, that's yeah. pretty, that is pretty cool. The other thing is we're looking at parking. We have 60,000 parking spaces. And again, we've um, looked at the data quite a bit. And what we do, we charge the same, the same uh, price at any of our stations. 
and we don't charge on weekends. So I'd like to look at um, putting that out as a concession contract. Okay. But to do that, you've got to give the concessioner the most, you know, opportunities to make dollars yeah. and for us to make dollars. So we just got uh, approval to do a pilot program for six for six months where we're going to do, look at variable pricing. So actually some of our parking prices will go down Okay. where we don't have good utilization. utilization. Let's try to draw people in. Some of them where we're packed, why aren't we charging more? Right, <laughs> right. right. Or, and we have a lot of people that use our garages and our facilities that don't uh, don't use our system. So we're saying, fine, you can use our garage, but you're going to pay more. Yes. <laughs> so it's things like that. We're going to start to charge for weekends. We're looking at, uh, we don't we don't allow anything else on our property. We're going to flip that. So whether it might be, you know, a car show or a produce stand or, or you know, a farmer's yeah. market, all that type of things. Okay. And again, we're doing it based on, you know, the looking at the data and look this value. And the, the example that I always give people is we had a million women march here, if you remember right. last year. Yes. It was a Saturday. We didn't make one penny off of it. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, we obviously made it from the from the fairs, but but think of that. And we were, you know, so we moved a million. I mean, and it was our busiest day. It was our second busiest day ever. Right. And we so it's we and we're bringing all these people in on Saturday, so it's all over. A lot of them came in on my mark service, by the way. Right. That's yeah. right. They used your yeah. line, yeah. but uh, yeah. literally, we were literally we could not. It was so crowded. We. We had to meter people, not because of the system as much, but literally they couldn't get out of the stations because oh, the wow. streets were so crowded. Okay. So, but I mean, and the, think of all the police forces, everything yeah. was all hands on deck and we didn't make one extra penny except for obviously the, the fare yeah. box. But right. why weren't we charging for parking for 500, you know, thousand yeah. people that were yeah. maximized all 60,000 of our spaces? You know, why wouldn't we? That's yep. what we do. I mean, that's not. So you're using big thing. data and yeah. analytics to really make better decisions. Yeah. yeah. Better and business then, decisions. Um, and um, as you know, with your background, with paratransit, we're trying some things there. Our paratransit riser, riders are costing us 50 some dollars, you know, a ride. Yeah. So we're trying to drive that down. So we've, we put out a, what's called the Abilities Ride Program, where, we, where we've put that out to the community or to the, the, um, consulting community or the delivery community. Yes. And we got actually two different taxi cab companies in two different parts of the region where they basically have to meet all of our standards. Um, but it's much more, you don't have to wait 24 hours. You don't have to go with someone else. You call directly and you know, it's a, it's a set thing. We give so much, they give so much. It's basically, it's running about $15 wow. you know, per ride. So that's, you know, so that's just started. That's been maybe six months old. Is so we'll do so that. Far? It's working very well. Good. But it's, you know, it's, you know, we're growing with, yeah. we're growing with it. But we work with our disability community to keep refining that. One of the big issues, you know, in that part of the business is making sure that if you go that way, that you have uh, taxi cabs that can pick up people that have disabilities where they need some sort of equipment or something. Right, like that. right. So that's one of the things that we required. Um, and they're, they're meeting that so far, but we, you know, that'll grow. Yes. And right. so we got to keep, keep on that. And there's other parts of the region where we're starting to look at other Good ways to do that. Yeah. So Everybody in the country is trying to figure out how to yeah. reduce costs because yeah. the, the the cost of paratransit is growing unsustainably. Oh, yeah. It's taking up, and the percentage is, wise, yeah. much more of your budget than the passenger count is to your overall yeah. ratios. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one other thing that we're just starting is we are going to do similar to what you did in Baltimore. Um, Looking at our entire bus system. Oh yeah, and what they did in Houston and a few other places. LA is doing one right now. Right, yeah. Just talk to Phil Washington about that. Yeah, yeah, they're doing one. We're coming at I think a little different. I mean, we're still talking to different people, but the, the way that I'm thinking of it is, um, a we're not going to do it internally. <laughs> okay, it's going to be purely external <laughs> because there's nothing we do internal. It will not. Yeah, you know, yeah. And with this whole credibility issue, but the way I'm I'm thinking of, you know, as a business. I've got, you know, a dozen, say, large maintenance facilities. I've got 1,500 buses. I've got, you know, 1,000 mechanics. I've got 4,000 operators. If I was Southwest or UPS or Amazon, and those were my resources, and here's my customer base as I know it today, but here's the potential of my customer base, what's the best way to use all those resources to, to meet that? Not... And not to, which we're going to do as well, which is the route planning part of it. And yeah. that, guess what? We had street cars and now the buses replace the street cars and they've been there for 50 years. I get all that. Right. We got to look at that too. Right. But I don't want that to be the focus of what we're doing. Okay. I want to look at it as, 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 as a business and the whole business model. Is that, do we, are we, you know, if, and I bet I could walk into almost any bus garage in this country and feel the same thing I felt when I walked into MTA 
25 years. Right, right. It's the exact same Bush thing. Bush Street Garage. <laughs> right, right. And he's, yeah, yeah, they're all the same. It's yeah. the same It's the same field, the same way that we apply our labor. Yes. The same scheduling. Interesting. We so you want to look is, at the whole business model. I want to look at the whole thing and say no. And I particularly want to do it in this region because we have what's called regional roots and non-regional roots. Okay. And it's, dry, it's driven by this, this complicated formula in this region. So we need to take a hard look at that. And, you know, what, you know, what makes the most sense? Then on, add on top of that technology and TNCs and all those other things that could come to the table right, now. Right, right. So that's where, I, you know, to me, it's it's a very different look. Um, it's going to be 18 months or so. We, 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 we have a, a contract now. We're bringing in some outside help. But and, but I want, it can't be my plan. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, it just, you know, it just won't work. <laughs> well, I think it's, that's very, that's, I'm, to me, this shows the value of having somebody who knows what they're doing in charge. I'm just going to be honest with you. And your planning right. background, how you know how that's coming into use, and even your background in aviation, pulling all that together and applying it here at Wamad. I mean, you got some exciting well, things going on. Of, it, it, it does. It does really drive me a little crazy with aviation because, as you know, I ran BWI Airport. BWI Airport was it's a state-owned airport. Right. It's one of the only three in the country. It's funded through the exact same source of funds that funds. Wamata, right. the Maryland portion of it. Right. But yet we ran that as a concession. Yep. Everything about it was thought of as a concession. Where can we make money to reduce the amount of state tax dollars that have to right. to it? Right. Here in transit, we just come at it from a different perspective. That's true. So, right. Like, why do we look at parking differently? Right. You know, and I had I had uh, I had twenty thousand parking spaces up there. I had it all contracted out. I made eighty nine cents on the dollar. I didn't do a thing. Except collect money, right? I'd have to do anything. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, are there different models for that? And again, same way with the with the bus. Um, is there just a different model? And it's not th- that anything is bad, right? It's just like is this you know, time better. moves on. Is yeah. there other ways to keep thinking it through this? And some it, we, some things that do, and some things that don't. And we'll get all the other pressures that come in. Yeah, you know, given given the the community we serve and the and the the politics of it. So I get all that, but at least. Let's attempt to come at it from a totally different approach. But you got to get you got to get you know everyone from you know the disabled community to people that want to do smart growth with trans. You know all the different factors that we play: environmental congestion, all that. But you also need the financial part of it and say, okay, that's fine. We mm-hmm. want to do all those things too. Right. <laughs> but how do we do that given the financial realities we're up against? How does the management labor relationship work in that oh, yeah. model? Right. You know, all those things to me. And they're not. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be extremely difficult. It'd be, it'd be a little bit easier just to look at the roots, and that would be tough enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I'd like to try to do. We'll that's see very exciting. Far. Yeah, it, it could I don't be, know anybody else doing exciting. that in the country. We're looking I, at the I'm whole sure business they, model. I'm sure they are, but um, it'll be in this environment. Given again all the yeah. layers that we have to go through, <laughs> it'll be fun. But we wish you the very best as <laughs> you continue to revolutionize transit uh, in this region. I mean, uh, you're you're leading the country. I think on the safety side looking at uh, innovative ways to finance it, and now looking at innovative ways to use big data to improve the service. Well, I mean, I don't think we're leading. I think, you know, like, as you know, in this business, like uh, most businesses, you steal from everybody. That's right, what right. Everybody's, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, one thing we have done, though, is we have looked uh, both lo- uh, nationally, but internationally. We had a conference here uh, about three months ago where we had five different continents, of properties from five different continents come in, and the theme of it was uh, transit as a concession, you know, oh, trans yeah. as a business to try to get, and again, it's that you can't apply what what happened in Hong Kong here. I get right, it. right. But there's things there you can learn. Uh, we use um, Network Rail in London, for instance. And, you know, yes, some of the, I met those guys. Yeah. yeah. So they just come at things a little differently. Sir some Peter good, Hanley, some or yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, and so they're again, they're not. You can't just transpose that those right. models to us. But what is it that you can pick from them? And they do the same from us. They're 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 doing things from us. Um, so, you know, I steal from Baltimore, you know, which is good. And, yeah, you know, and that's, yeah. And we, uh, I deal, I dealt a lot with Boston and some of the stuff that, uh, oh, yeah. Brian Shortsley was, yes. was going through. Yeah. So some of our stuff looks a lot like his, for instance. Yeah. He uh, told me too, when I was talking to him recently that, uh, of course he's not in that slot right. anymore, but just like you, he said, Paul, I, I'm literally on the front page of the paper almost every day like you are. Uh, and we didn't even get to talk about maybe just one minute about the Silver Line and the Purple Line and what's happening with the rail innovations that are yeah. going on. Um, Silver Line is uh, it's not we're not building a project. It's okay. a turnkey project. Actually, the airport's doing it because of the way they 
did the funding structure. So we have basically this is going half, out to Dulles, right? Yeah, it's going out to Dulles. About half of it's built, the other half's coming in 2020. One thing that we are doing a little different, though, is we are we are about to go down on the street in RFI, where we're looking at could a contractor run that system, <clears throat> the next phase of it. Okay. So that could be everything from stations to track inspection, the track work power, you name it. Right. right? Um, so we'll see what the market. Kind of what starts. you were just talking about when you looked at what everybody's doing around the world, right? right. So yeah. that, yeah, now it's, it's difficult because it's a relatively small portion. So we'll see. Oh, is the, it? Okay. The, How many know, miles is that? Do you know? It'll be about another 10 miles. Okay. But well, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's decent. We'll You'll see. have heavy traffic going to Dulles. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's connected to the other part of the line. So it'll right, be a Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, one. The purple line is being built by the state of Maryland, but it impacts us at, at several locations. So, <clears throat> so basically, we're working very closely with them. Uh, we had a negotiated deal there because generally we charge for any any property you take from us. So we negotiated a deal with them because I thought that from a, again thinking from a customer, they don't know that this is built by the state of Maryland or right. run. It's actually going to be run by a private company. Yeah, they don't know that. They don't care. Yeah. they just want to get from right. you know Reagan Airport or Dulles up to University of Maryland to watch a Big Ten because you're just flew in from you know a Big Ten school out in yes. Ohio or Chicago right, right. or something. And you just see a purple line on the map that's right. connected to a It almost line. seems like it's connected to Wamana. It well will be. Yeah, I mean, but it seems like it's part of your service. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to be hitting us a number of things. So that's yeah. so Bethesda, Silver Spring, New Carrollton. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. we're trying to make sure that it's just from a customer perspective, you wouldn't even know. Seamless. You would not even know this is a different system. Right. So that's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. And then just physically, when it touches us, it causes a number of issues because, you know, in terms of service impacts as they do with construction. Right. So we're working with them now, in fact, uh, and we do the same thing with Union Station here, which is our busiest station. Oh, yeah. They're doing a huge innovation there. Right. So it's the same thing. We just got to make that, you know, when you get off a Amtrak or with some of the commuter lines from Virginia, Maryland, you just get in our system and, you know, as a customer, you don't care. You just want to go, you know. Yeah. That's, you don't care who runs it. <laughs> so if people want to find out more what's happening at Wamata across the country because you guys are leading, where should they go? Just to your website? Yeah, to a website. Mm -hmm. We have some um, real good people that, you know, for, obviously for industry people, uh, we can, you know, put them in contact with everyone. And we use Apta quite a bit. We just did another peer review recently. Uh, we've done a few of them. Uh, we did one on, on um, uh, bus assaults, operator okay. assaults. You yeah. Know, it's a big issue, you know, uh, for our industry. We had a spike in that, um, so we're trying to do some things there. Um, so anyway, so we're constantly looking out. Again, like we said, steel, borrow. Yeah, know, well, it's one big industry. Yeah. I guess my last question for you is on transit security, because you mentioned that. Uh, you and I have had conversations about this in the past, how the aviation world kind of uh, federalized their security right. through right. TSA. Um, what's your general thoughts on security for public transit across America? Right. Well, I mean... It, we have to recognize it's not aviation. It's a, it's an open system. Right. And, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Definition, you know, and and the volumes of people. Uh, I like to I like to remind people Dulles Airport, which is a, you know great airport and does a tremendous th stuff for the economy here. We move as many people as Dulles does, li literally almost every three weeks. So as many as they do in a year. Yeah, as many as they do in a year, <laughs> we do a little bit more than three weeks. Yeah. So, that gives you a sense of scale. There's yeah. no way we're going to be able to right. you know, put them through just, a metal detector. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just not realistic. Um, so we do like everybody else. You know, you do a layer layer impact. We have tremendous closed circuit television where we monitor. We have a, a great relationship with the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and we we uh, again in this region, as you can imagine, yes. such a, like New York and other right. places, we're, we are a target. We know it. Um, and it's something that we we deal with daily, literally daily, mm -hmm. um, and we'll continue to do that. But I don't see major restrictions. I think it's going to be again just a series of layers. Technology can help us. Uh, we need the customer to help us. <laughs> you know all those things. You mm -hmm. know to see something, say something. I know it sounds trite, but the reality is, in fact, I had one just about a half hour ago mm. of someone that reported something suspicious at a, at a bus stop. Mm. You know, so that's what we want to hear. Right. You know, right. Let's let us. We're worried about it, not you. <laughs> Do you think there is an um, is there a need for an increased? Fed I know that this is anathema here, but right, right. an increased federal role in public transit. I think uh, in, in general, yes. I mean, and I, I make it larger than that. I mean, you know, um, in some ways, you know, I think initially we were maybe the poster child. Right now, yeah. you're seeing it in New York, and, absolutely, and San Francisco, and other places. Yeah. Uh, infrastructure. Um, you know, it is, it drives, we have a, our, the metro system here is a $40 billion investment, mm. $40 billion capital investment. 
that unlike a business where if you have a big capital investment, you could assess and say, okay, well, we're going to go a different way. But we're not going a different way. <laughs> you know, this is a system that has to go and we have to invest. And like other places, I'm, you know, I'm sure everyone read the, the article in the New York Times magazine, um, you know, the subway, what they're going through up, up there. And it made that city. It is, you know, it is part of the fabric of the, of the city. And the city doesn't work without it. Yeah. And you can't just ignore it and pretend it's going to get better. Yeah. Our uh, buddy Andy Byford's got his hand full. Right. There. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Andy's, yeah. I just talked um, to him last weekend about well, it. Well, New Jersey Transit is right. going through the same. Amtrak's going through the same stuff. Yeah. So we need three incidents in 46 yeah. days or something. Yeah. But I mean, it's it. But a lot of the root cause is the investment it takes to do these things. That's I mean, right. We know with Amtrak, some of the things that they that they need in deposit train control. It's, right. It's nothing new. Right, yeah. You know? Just get um, it done, but, but it costs dollars. billions. It, yeah, it costs dollars. Yeah. And similar to what we've had to do here and other people are dealing with, is you, we have to be we have to be upfront with our customers. And say, look, we can't just do this magically. Mm-hmm. It does impact the customers to do it. Um, we wish it didn't, but it does. And so New York, when, you know, when they shut down one of their lines and they hit 100,000 people a day, but what are their options? There right. are no other options. Right. So I think the, the more that we're upfront and clear about it and, you know, let people know and then show the success and show, you mm-hmm. know, like we're doing with the rush hour, say, OK, look, because of that, now we can start to do this. We can be we were at like 70 percent reliable, you know, and now you're ago. at 90 and we're at 90. So wow. now you can start to show and they say, OK, I get it. Yep. You know, I put up that little bit of pain. Um, so anyway, that's yeah. I think so. It's bigger than just us. I think that's right. Infrastructure wise. Well, I think un- probably unlike any other city except, like you said, New York, San Francisco, Chicago, L.A., these areas, D.C., the transit, it impacts uh, 40% of them, you said, are federal employees. I mean, the, the nation's government is riding on our, your service here. And so we uh, we look forward to seeing many more great successes, Paul. You've done a great job here in Thanks, two years. Sir. I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. All right. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate thank you. It. Yep. You've been listening to Transit Unplugged, powered by Trapeze Group. To stay up to date, subscribe on iTunes or Google Play, or join the conversation at transitunplugged.com. Thanks for listening.